Today we're going to continue our um, movement into calculus. I do want to clarify though that the quiz we took on, what was it, Tuesday? Regardless of whether you were here or not on Tuesday, this is for everybody at home too, I expect it to be done by the time you leave on Friday. Okay? Um, I think that's fair. Gives you gives some flexibility, but yet makes it clear that that's got to get done. Okay? Um, so. So today we're going to, you know, uh, we're going to do something that we did earlier in the year. We're just going to set it up uh, now for, so you guys can see a pattern and we'll move on. I don't, I'm going to see if pencil will work today. If not, we'll make a modification. Nope. Not dark enough for you guys to see. Let's try again. There we go. Okay. So, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be um, practice finding um, the slope of a tangent line. Okay. So, another way of saying this, that whole thing is shortened up to be called a derivative. Okay? The derivative is known as f prime of x. Okay? Not a minus one, that's the f inverse, f prime of x. Okay, so we're going to start off with a with a, an example that should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so um, <clears throat> um, well, before we do that, I'm just going to give us a little. Don't draw this again because you have this from the other day. Okay, what we're doing is we're saying here's my x. I'm going h units over. This is x plus h. This is f of x. And this right here is f of x plus h. We'll review this real quick. Um, so like right here. Is that green line a tangent line? Think back to... Um, now, this is not Sokotoa tangent, this is geometry tangent. Do you remember how a tangent relates to a circle? Only hits it at one point, okay? So when you talked about a tangent to a circle, you had a line that was like that, okay? So right now, is this green a tangent line? No, it hits at two points. That is called a secant. Okay, my goal is to find the slope of this, or find the equation of that tangent line. Not just the slope of it, but find the equation of that tangent line. Okay, and we'll kind of make some sense of it here pretty quick. But how do we do this? Well, we've got two points. This first point, I'm going to write this far over here so I don't muddy up my picture. It's x f of x. Agreed? x units over, that many units up. This next one, what's my x coordinate? x plus h. It's x plus a little bit more, and my y coordinate is f of x plus h. Okay? So to find the slope of my green secant line, okay, equals the change in y. Do you honestly see where I'm getting that? How much my y change? The difference of my y's over the difference of my x's. That's the slope of a secant line. 
and obviously these X's cancel out, it's just over H. Okay? So now, we talked about it the other day, if I make my H smaller, I'm getting closer to the slope of my tangent line, or the equation of my tangent line. If I make my H smaller, I'm getting closer to the slope or equation of my tangent line. If I get my, my H infinitely small, well then I'll have the equation of my tangent line. So it gets back to what we talked about with calculus the other day, that calculus, you know, in a lot of ways, is the um, study of rate of change in infinitely small intervals, okay? So now, if I would add one thing, my tangent line equation, all I've got to do is picture H being arbitrarily small and there's my tangent line, or that's going to be known as F prime of X, okay? That's huge. That is huge. Today, this is the last, this is, I'm not going to really, uh, I, I won't hammer this home too much more with a picture because I, hopefully that's kind of getting there. And then we're just going to do algebra examples and then we're going to get to the shortcut. Maybe. Okay, so, we're going to do an example. Let's say that f of x equals 2x plus 3. Okay? Now, spoiler alert, what's the slope of this line? 2. Is it always 2? Yeah, it's 2 all the time. That's just what it is. Okay? But, to get our feet on the ground solid, we're going to go with this easy example and then we're going to get a little bit more challenging. So I fully expect my slope to be two. Let's see what happens, okay? So, we got, I'm just gonna write my equation down. F prime of X equals F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. Nope, oh, I have my limit as h approaches zero. That's important. So now what am I going to do with my x plus h? I'm plugging it in for x. Okay, so here we go. 2 times x plus h plus 3 minus, and I'm going to put this in parentheses because this is the most common problem is people forget their parentheses and don't drive a negative through. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put x in instead. Oh, wait, x is already there. So we're going to go 2x plus 3. So I forgot my limit again. Ugh. Okay. So what have I done? Well, this is the value of my function a little bit further over. And this is the original value of my function. That's my old function. And then my function with just a little value of h added to it. So it slid over just a little bit. Okay? So now we gotta do is algebra. Last time I checked, 2h divided by h was 2. Since h is no longer involved, my limit is just 2. Okay, so now this is going to be fairly revolutionary in just a second. Okay. 
What's my slope at zero? Two. What's my slope at one? What's my slope at five? What's my slope at negative one? Two. That's why there's no x in here. My slope is freaking always two. All the time. All the time. Okay? So, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have a master sheet here. And I'm gonna go like this. You don't have to write this down. Okay, so now let's go on to another example. This one's gonna get tougher, but that's okay. Let's say that f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 7. Okay. Holy cow, it is pouring. No, just joking. Tomorrow, it'll probably be raining. If Jesse was here, he would have looked. Don't you guys think so? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. F prime of x, which F prime of x is the derivative, which tells me this is going to, it's a slope giver equation. Your brain might be blowing up here in just a little bit. Okay. Um, so it is the limit as h approaches zero of this big old thing. So. So what I've got to do is the same thing I did in the last one. I've got to plug in x plus h. And again, the reason why we're plugging in x plus h is because I need a second point that is just a little bit over so I can find the slope between two points. So what am I going to subtract? My original function. Okay. So... I'm going to kind of do some things just to kind of save us some space here. If I look at this x plus h times x plus h, that's what x plus h squared is. I'm just going to multiply this out. Help me out. What do I get if I multiply that out? Good. Calculus is about algebra, algebra, algebra plus 3x plus 3h plus 7 minus x squared minus 3x minus 7. And I'm going to give you an example to do on your own after this. Okay? If you want to just watch this one, you can. So now what we got to do now is simplify. We've blown it up what the value of that function is when I plug in x plus h. And then I've subtracted my original function when I just plugged in x. And now there's always a bunch of stuff going to cancel out. Always, 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 always. My x squared will cancel. My 3x will cancel. My negative 7 and my 7 will cancel. And here's a hint that you've done everything right. Every term that's left has what involved? an H. So now what we can do is we can cancel that H that's on the bottom with every single term. So we're going to take an H out of the top and bottom and they'll just cancel each other out. So I've got limit as H approaches zero of 2X plus H plus 3 and now my H on the bottom is now gone.
Okay? So now let's ask ourselves this question. What's this expression getting closer and closer and closer to as h gets closer to zero? Well, as h gets closer to zero, this term will just disappear, won't it? So then my answer is just 2x plus 3. Okay? Oh my gosh, I'm getting all mixed up here. Green caps on blue pens. Jeez. It's just a mess. Okay, so now what I'm going to do to show you what's going on is I'm just going to go ahead and on my graphing calculator, I'm going to plot my original equation. x squared plus 3x plus 7. And then I'm just going to do zoom standard. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, no, 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 zoom, I'm going to do zoom box, where's my deal here, have you ever zoom box before? Um, I'm going to do one other thing here. Okay. So, so now, let's, there's my original function. What do you think my slope is of this curve at zero? What do you think it might be? It's fairly steep, right? Well, look at this. If I plug in zero, what do I get? Three. My slope is three. My, f my slope of this right here at negative one, huh, plug in negative one, what do you get? One. My slope at negative one is one. Now let's plug in negative two. If I plug in negative two into this one, I get negative one. There's negative two, there's right there. So I'm finding the slope of a, of a tangent line, okay? Um, okay? So what this does is this gives me my slope of the curve for any value of x that I plug in. The derivative is my equation that gives me my rate of change for whatever value I plug in. If this was a business application and X was months and I wanted to know how fast are my sales changing in January, I'd plug in one. If I want to know how fast are my sales changing in June, I'd plug in six. Okay? And in the real world here, if I said, okay, my sales, my change in my sales is negative, that means my sales are going down. But if my change in my sales is positive, that means my sales are going up. Okay? So granted, what we're doing right now is just showing a geometric relationship. I just spit on my graphing calculator. Okay? Um, but what this actually does in the real world is it tells us the rate of change with our y regarding to our x. Our y might be sales and months for my x, or my y might be our federal deficit, and the x might be our years. That'd be how fast our federal deficit is growing or shrinking. <laughs> yeah, right, shrinking. I could go off on a tangent here. <laughs> anyway, no, our federal deficit in 2005 was five trillion dollars. Now in 2024, it's 35 trillion dollars. 
So in the past 19 years, we've spent $30 trillion that we don't have. Sorry, guys. Man, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. God. I just wish we had some... I wish we had either party talking about it. You know? I know. They don't want to tell reality. The reality needs to be, folks, we're in trouble, so we're going to have to keep this country on the right track. We're going to have to maybe get some people to pay a little bit more. We're going to have to spend a lot less. And then we're going to at least flatten out the growth in our deficit. And then maybe later on we can start talking about decreasing our deficit. But, ugh, yuck. Okay, so I'm going to add to my list of functions. My original function here was x squared plus 3x plus 7. My derivative was 2x plus 3. Okay? We're going to look for a pattern later. So here you go. This is the one you do on your own. Ready? And I'm going to make this one just a little bit more of a challenge. I'm going to go a 2x squared minus 5x plus 9. But before we do anything, I want to show one more thing. One thing you'll notice is the sevens canceled out. The seven in my original equation, that's my y-intercept, right? That's the height of my function. If I would have changed that seven to five, would that have changed my slope anywhere? No, all I did was move it down. But my slope at negative two is still negative one. My slope at negative one is still one. My slope at zero is still three. So you'll notice that this will always disappear. It doesn't matter it's with my rate of change. So, okay, so here you go. The only thing I'm gonna warn you is imagine, let's just imagine, if we went back to this one and there was a two out front of here. I'd have to multiply this out, and on the next step, drive a two through, okay? So, I will, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can still see that, see your new function. Um, and that might give you a little bit of guidance if you get stuck. Okay, so try and write, I'm gonna give you a minute to write out the original and then I'll confirm it and then I'm gonna ask you to start simplifying it. It's the function with x plus h plugged in, subtracted the original function. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit more. Be patient, there's a shortcut happening. But in calculus, they will quiz you on being able to do it without the shortcut. And then they will toss that aside forever and you'll use the shortcut. But they will make sure you can do this. Here's your first step if you're not, if you want to double check.
If you're getting stuck, let me know. I can come around and get you unstuck. Or you can visit with a neighbor. But now it's just Algebra of Palooza. I like doing stuff like this because it makes it makes us feel kind of smart that all the stuff that we worked on for years is now going to be useful in clearing a hurdle in our higher education. Here's the next step if you're st stuck. Okay, here we go. Freeze time. Here's the next step. Lo and behold, everything that doesn't have an H cancels out everything else that doesn't have an H. That's just the way it works. And thank goodness, because now I'm skipping a step here because technically they'll have you pull out an H, rewrite it, and then cancel your H's, but I'm skipping that step. Hopefully you guys are all right with that. Limit H approaches zero, four X plus two H minus five, And as H approaches zero, that expression is getting closer and closer and closer to this part right here is getting closer to zero. So then we're just left at four X minus five. So the derivative is four X minus five. Okay. I'm going to show you this once again. 2x squared minus 5x, x plus 9, zoom 6, zoom standard. Where is this bad boy? So I'm just going to change. I'm just going to do zoom. Zoom in. Okay. 